your turn. Before we get started, I'd like to recognize that, thank you, the Mount Diablo Unified School District sits on the territory of the Confederate villages of, of Lishan, the ancestral and unceded land of the Bay Miwok and Northern Yokut, the successors of the Sovereign Verona Board of Contra Costa County. As members of the MDUS community, it is vitally important that we not only recognize the history of the land on which we learn, but also we recognize that the land we inhabit and learn on is the ancestral land of these people who are alive and flourishing members of MDUSD and broader Bay Area communities today. You can rise to um, make the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, 6.2 review and potential approval of minutes for the regular board meeting. Madam President, I move that the minutes be um, approved as presented. I'll second that. Sorry. Sorry, Trustee Barrios. Yes. Yes. No, oh, most trust is that <laughs> you tricked me because you were not here. Um, that passes four zero with one ab abstention and affirmed by their student board member. Um, 6.3 review and potential approval of the agenda. Are there any changes? Great. Make it a motion. Agenda as presented. Go ahead. No. Second, Trustee Barrios. Now you're voting. Yes. And that passes unanimously. And now the best part of the night, 6.4, oath of office of our new student board member, Susana Barrios. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. How are you? Good and you? Good. Are you excited? Yeah. Okay. Your oath of office. Mm -hmm. So you'll please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Susanna Barrios. I, Susanna Barrios. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend. Support and defend the Constitution, Constitution of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. 
foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true. That I will bear true. Faith and allegiance. Faith and allegiance. To the Constitution. To the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution. And the Constitution. Of the State of California. Of the State of California. That I take this. That I take this. Obligation freely. Obligation freely. Without any mental. Without any mental. Reservation or purpose. Reservation or purpose. Of evasion. Of evasion. And that I will well. And I will well. Faithfully discharge. And faithfully discharge. The duties upon which. The duties upon which. I'm about to enter. I'm about to enter. Congratulations. Thank you. Can grow. Take a picture okay. with everybody. Trustee Barrios, this is our first day and this year is going to go so fast and that already makes me sad, <laughs> but I'm so excited to welcome you to the board. My favorite. Movie. Okay. Seven point report out action on items taken in closed session. Um, 7.1 negotiations. The board may discuss negotiations to provide direction to its representatives regarding represented employees pursuant to government code section 54957.6 and we received information. 7.2 discipline, dismissal, release or reassignment of public employee government code section 54957B1. We received information. Um, 7.3 Existing litigation conference with legal counsel, government code section 54956. We conferenced with, oh, it changed. We're on 7.3. <laughs> Go away, my language. <laughs> we, oh, I thought that was Jane Doe. Yeah, I need I need to see 7.3, I'm sorry. Why does it say 7.4? Okay. Well, we agreed to a settlement with Jane Doe, case number. Yes, the case number is ADR case number 23-2401-SKA. And the board uh, approved the settlement as provided. Thank you. Sorry, my wouldn't go backwards. <laughs> um, 7.4, conference with legal counsel, um, anticipated litigation regarding Orion Academy, and we received information. 7.5, public employee performance evaluation superintendent pursuant to government code 54957. We continued that process, receiving and giving information. And 7.5, 
six readmission of student A23 to regular schools in the Mount Diablo Unified School District. Um, we voted to approve the readmission of student A23 to regular schools in the Mount Diablo Unified School District. Moving on to 8.1 public comments. Public comment is, um, is limited to items that are not on the agenda at this time, and you will have three minutes. And because it's not agendized, we can't respond to anything you might say. Um, we can only listen. Um, our first speaker is Mawaku Tubenyo. Uh, yes, my name is Mawuko Tabinyo. Um, I work over at the CYC. Uh, it's been here in Concord since 1995. Um, <clears throat> we're a uh, primarily sports and academic center. Um, we currently have about 1900 members. Uh, we serve ages or grades K through 12. Um, and we're, we have everybody from the whole Bay Area over there. Everybody as far as Vallejo, all the way down to Union City. Um, the primary mission of this place is to serve, it's to provide a quality sports and academic experience um, for the underprivileged. So our membership is currently $35 a month, uh, $18 for the next sibling, and 23% of our membership is on scholarship. Um, and when you pay that fee, like you have access to all the programs, right? Cheer, um, boxing, wrestling, uh, Taekwondo, Judo, soccer, uh, getting a couple but we've got oh uh, sports conditioning um flag football like the kids can go in there and have a great time and uh we're already just trying to expand what we do with the district uh we had some of the girls from the uh, varsity basketball team from mount d come over and they were, were training before last season um we did a demonstration over at uh olympic high school um just to show like we have three programs, you know, perform and so they can kind of see what they have access to like so close to them. Um, we have space for probably at least another 500 members and um, and just really thinking about how we can try to work with the district even further to kind of bridge the gap there. Um, some of the other highlights we have like we're, we're a local uh, ACT testing site. So the next site close to here is 30 to 45 minute drive. Um, currently our dates are in December and in February for uh, this school year testing. Um, I'm working on trying to get us to be one for the uh, SAT and also provide after school credit. So then it gives us the door to uh, be able to come in and test for the ACT on site. Um, we could also provide as far as testing like private testing just for the high school. So if you wanna make sure the high school, local high schools guarantee spots, like we can do that, just have a closed site versus like open to everybody in the public. You just gotta let us know. Uh, I don't know what else we got going on. Um, there's something else here. Oh, and uh, this upcoming fall, um, we're gonna have, so I wanna expand to mental health. And so we'll I really wanna hit the entire like student athlete, right? So we're gonna have social work interns come in in the fall and they're gonna do their hours there and provide coaching for the uh, for our coaches, for members, uh, parenting classes, just really wanna expand it to allow our membership to have access to everything. Is that for me? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, I wasn't sure, well, what's this coming? Okay, yeah. um, that was it. Just wanted to, just, I appreciate the time, thank you. Oh, I have flyers, do I leave them for you guys in there? Thank you so much. Debbie Hickey. Good evening, President, Madam President, board members, superintendent. Um, you guys know that I don't come here unless there's something really, really bothering me. And so I haven't been here for a very long time, but I'm here today. Um, I have concerns with our purchasing department. 
I feel as if there are office managers that are being targeted by our purchasing department, and there's some items on, on in their own manual that they're not adhering to. And I'm going to give you an example, one of which is what um, when teachers are requesting to go to conferences or other staff members are requesting to go to conferences, we are required to put them on our personal credit cards. That is not okay with me. Um, I have said this for two years. I've been asking the purchasing department to make sure that they do it. Yes, all office managers have been researching every single item and we give them those things in regards to that with quotes. I recently had one and I have been begging for not to pay for. Yes, the hotel is $283, but it's part of the package. And then I was told by the director that there are other hotels we can be at. And so I could still apply for that position, but I could put it on my credit card and then wait for it to be paid. We all know that we can't be paid until after the conference is over, after we've gotten all of our purchasing and we sent back our travel forms. That is not acceptable. That's over six months. This conference is in January. Last year, the same exact conference, again, which I had to wait and get them to approve, hotel in January, which meant that I didn't get to stay in the hotel, nor did my teachers get to stay in the hotel. We had to walk or get an Uber back to the conference. Not okay. I think that if they're gonna say in their manual, page three of 554, that all of the purchases are going to come through purchasing, then purchasing should put the hotels on their own bills. I don't feel that it is my responsibility to take care of that. It is their responsibility. If they're taking care of, they're the only ones that have Cal cards. Some of the people at the district office have Cal cards, but it's not my responsibility to cover everybody's hotel room until somebody else gets it charged. So I would like you to have them readjust that rechange that, look at it, make sure that the office managers and um, are not targeted because of that, because there are other things that are happening in there as well. And you want to follow your own manual. Thank you. Thank you. Justin Fivea. Hi there, good evening. My name is Justin Favela. Uh, I have, uh, as a former teacher, I tend to get passionate and can talk on and on. So I have some notes, I'm gonna keep myself on track. So uh, my name is Justin Favela. I am the education coordinator for the Contra Costa Water District. Uh, I've been there for a few years now. Um, and I realized that a lot of people in the area know that we serve 500,000 people spanning from Oakley all the way up Highway 4 and through Concord and Clayton and Martinez. But what I found uh, as an education coordinator there is I've been really busy upgrading the curriculum to meet all the state standards, really bringing in technology, uh, really focusing on equity, really focusing on career readiness, showing kiddos in the classroom how what they're doing connects to jobs and really getting personal stories about how the path from where they sit to where we all are is not just some linear path that's ups and downs and lefts and right and failure is part of success. Uh, and in all of that, I've realized that while people know about the Contra Costa Water District, they don't really know about our water ed programs and that we reach about 30,000 kids every year. So I'm here to spread the word about it, to let everybody know that uh, we have room to grow. And last year we did approximately 170 programs with Mount Table Unified, and that reached about 8,800 kids. And so that's not individual kids, right? Kids are doing multiple programs. Um, but, uh, you know, I want to thank um, the admin staff and all the board for the participation. Uh, Mount Table Unified has worked with us for over two decades. And predominantly we focus on third, fourth, and fifth students. And uh, they range from field trips, bringing them out to the to Los Riqueros watershed, bringing them to our water treatment plants. Uh, one that's near and dear to my heart that I still can't believe we do because it's so awesome, putting kids on a boat and taking them out to the Delta, on the Delta Discovery Voyage. In-classroom programs, assembly programs, focusing on some pilots for high school programs now, high, high school students. Um, and all these programs are completely free. Um, and so, a lot of these programs, the goals are to, to focus on the source of their water, of all of our water, to get kids to understand, to be good stewards, and that conserving water, uh, it's not an endless commodity. It's something we all need to cherish. And quite frankly, for the young kids, uh, getting kids to understand that the water molecule is pretty dang cool. Um, so really kind of getting that interest and in, in, uh, ownership there. Uh, and again, really focusing on jobs. There's a lot of really good uh, industry jobs and uh, in the water industry that nobody knows about. So uh, my point is that there's capacity for more, and you know I would love to uh, uh, to speak to any of you about that. Um, and another one that I'm really proud of is we have a bus reimbursement program of up to $350 for our Los Sacaros field trips, 
uh, and also where I'm, I'm happy to announce that uh, I got funding for a scholarship. So um, uh, applicable Title I schools can get another 250, so it's up to $600 of reimbursement for our field trips. Um, so I'm excited to, uh, to share water education programs and uh, I brought a few flyers. I hope I can kind of leave these behind. So thank you for your time. Thank you. I just want to say thank you for bringing this up and sharing this with the public over the years as a parent. Um, I've attended many of these trips. I really enjoyed the reservoir and also the Delta Voyage. Yeah. So thank you for all that you do. Thank you for utilizing. Michael Schneider. Good evening, Dr. Clark and board members of uh, Mount Diablo School District. I just want to talk to you about um, it's 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 been hard going ahead the last uh, few months here with the school district not having virtual access to meetings such as this. I'm a single dad as many are in this district are single parents, they're working two jobs and they wanna be involved. They are seeing things, they wanna get in the committees, but for some reason we can't seem to get it for this school district. I can go to the county, they even have phone calls. I'm asking what are the barriers that are preventing this from happening that we have hybrid for all committee meetings across the district, hybrid being in-person, virtual or by phone calls. The county does it, all other school districts practically in the state of California do it. And this has really become an equitable uh, equity issue. And, um, um, and I'm really just looking for equitable access for all parents and community education partners of Mount Diablo. Thank you. Thank you. We move, we move on to nine point. 9.1, communications, district organizations at regular board meetings, a single spokesperson of each recognized district organization may make a brief presentation. Items are limited to those which are informational. And we have Ms. Anita Johnson. Good evening and welcome to a new school year. My name is Anita Johnson. My pronouns are she and her. I am president of the Mount Diablo Unified, the Mount Diablo Education Association. We are a united group of educators working to improve the learning conditions of the students in this district. There are three major topics that I would like to bring to your attention this evening. First off are the holes in this district, the bait and switches that are going on, and thirdly, the transfer debacles. First off, this district is full of holes. There are so many vacancies that I have not yet been able to identify them or even count them. Not just in classrooms, which is very, very problematic, but also in very critical support roles. And why are there vacancies? First off, management has driven people away through terrible disrespect and lack of support. Secondly, this district cannot retain employees because the salary, benefits, and working conditions are not competitive. Other local districts have taken steps. They've had the forethought and the strategic sense to take steps to retain educators because they knew there was a severe teacher shortage. In contrast, this district has continued as if educators aren't people and don't really matter. Yes, there is a teacher shortage, and yes, many other districts have some shortages, but nowhere near as bad as in this district. And the students are suffering. Learning loss is massive. Bullying increases when there is not a regular teacher in the classroom. And the solution is not marketing. Billboards and Facebook ads will not solve this problem. It is an economic problem that demands economic solutions. Please, for the sake of the children, fix this problem now. Because before you know it, as President Enzewi said, before we know it, this year will be over. Um, and as soon as, as early as February, this district needs to start filling for next year. 
Nobody has a lot of hope for all the vacancies this year. There simply are not people out there. But possibly, if we start in February, we can fill some jobs. But we have to make some serious changes to be ready to do that. I also need to tell you about all of the bait and switch situations that I have gotten calls about. There have been so many that I have lost count. Educators accepted positions in this district and agreed to stay at their schools if they were already here based on promises from management. Now that they are contractually bound for a full year, management does not recall the promises. Over and over again, these teachers are horrified by how they are being treated and the situations that they have to put up with. I don't find this behavior acceptable and I hope that you don't either. The last major issue I need to bring to your attention is the current debacles regarding transferring students from schools. First off, we've heard of many students who had been promised places in this district and have now been told no, you have to go back to your home district. If this district is experiencing declining enrollment, why on earth are we turning students away and having parents scramble to find a new place for their child at the last minute? Also, students are being transferred to different schools within classrooms at schools at the last minute based on somebody's ideas about, well, we don't really need very many teachers at the school anymore. We don't really need this many classes. Nobody, nobody knows exactly how many students are, um, are, are here and are going to be here in two weeks. There's just so much change at the beginning of the year. Yes, we know that some students, know, some teachers, families notified the district that they would not be attending this district next year. But that doesn't mean more students aren't coming. The planning process around this really needs to be looked at. There, this district never ever used to transfer, make any of these transfers at the beginning of the year because management realized that the beginning of the year is a precious time to build classroom community and to, for children to have stability. It's not worth the couple of dollars that are saved by having extra large classes just because you, you think that there aren't gonna be the kids. Um, it's just horrible and it is impacting the students more than anybody else. And then when we see an announcement that blames this on the teachers union and says, well, management knew that these transfers needed to happen in the summer, but wasn't allowed to transfer them over the summer. And the the one of the very, very good reasons we do not allow transfers over the summer is because nobody really knows where the students are going to be. It makes no sense to call somebody when they are not being paid to work and try and move them around to a different school and scramble to set up a new classroom. What really does make sense is, oh, we've got a couple, maybe a few, two kids in this room. Let's just leave it that way for a year, um, especially in rooms where the students where over 80% of the students are not working at grade level. There's no reason that that classroom needs to be filled to capacity. Um, I have one example of both of these last two issues. I had a teacher call me today, eight o'clock this morning, she was told that her fourth grade class was being collapsed because it only had 27 kids. And she had to tell her students at 8.30, that they were going to different rooms. Two rooms, they're over the classroom maximums for the number of students. What sense there is in that, I don't know. Then she had to go right after that and start teaching a class that was completely different and that she did not have any time to prepare for. It's just horrendous. And yes, she does have a contract and has to stay in this district if she wants to teach for another year, but she's probably going to leave the teaching profession because who would put up with being treated that way? And the students in, in her current room, her room yesterday are suffering. The students in her room today are suffering and students will suffer in the future because she's a fabulous teacher that is now losing, leaving the profession. 
Um, and some, some people in this room will blame that teacher saying that she should put up with all of that for the students. And I don't, I wanna ask you who you blame. I want you to really think about how could this have been prevented and what are you going to do about it? Thank you. Thank you. Ten point zero <clears throat> recognitions and resolutions. Ten point one review and potential approval of resolution twenty three twenty four dash four for personnel with provisional internship permits. Yes, yeah, so we're going to have Dr. Rubio <clears throat> take ten point one and ten point two, and this has to do with um, personnel with provisional internship permits. Thank you very much, uh, board members. This is related to the ongoing effort where we do everything we can to make sure we're getting as many teachers uh, like all school districts are. The CTC, as you know, provides applicants additional time to meet subject matter competence requirements needed to enter an internship program. I'm happy to have before you 25 individuals who can qualify for that with your approval. Madam President, I move to approve board resolution 2324-4 for personnel with provisional internship permits. I'll second that. Trustee Barrios. Yes. And that passes. Thank you very much. Point two, review and potential approval of board resolution 2324-5 for personnel with variable term waivers. Thank you. Very similarly, uh, variable term waivers uh, give our applicants additional time to complete certain requirements for the credential that authorizes their service. We have eight individuals that we're asking and requesting your approval for. Madam President, I'll move that the board approve variable term waivers. Second that. Trustee Barrios. Yes. There you go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 10.3 review and potential approval of resolution 23 24 6 adopting recommendation by Concord High School students to retire Minutemen mascot and adopt the mascot bears as elected by the students. Coming in. Not the first time. Mm -hmm. okay. We'll go to public. Comments first, Ashley Barrows. Dr. Clark, members of the school board. It basically comes down to a point of order. You may not and cannot revote on an issue of retiring the Minutemen mascot from Concord High. The Mount Diablo Unified School District is an accredited member of the California School Boards Association and as a member is obligated to follow the standing rules and bylaws of the CSBA, both of which clearly state the most recent edition of Robert's Rules of Orders shall be the parliamentary authority. According to Robert's Rules of Order, the only way to re-vote on an issue that has failed is through a motion to reconsider. However, Robert's rules also makes clear that this motion must be made within a limited time after the action of the original motion. And the motion to reconsider may be made only by a member who voted on the prevailing side of the original vote. The failed vote to consider retiring the Minutemen mascot at Concord High School happened seven weeks ago. And the call to, for a motion to reconsider is not coming from an authorized source. Why is it on the agenda? MDUSD's own bylaw number 9320 states, a board meeting exists whenever a majority of board members gather at the same time and location. On June 28, 2023, four of the five trustees were in attendance. This is an 80% turnout and therefore all action taken was official and complete. The resolution to retire the Minutemen mascot failed. Why is it on the agenda? 
Having the issue to consider retiring the Minutemen mascot once again on the agenda goes directly against the guidelines set forth by the California School Boards Association, Roberts Rules of Order, Mount Diablo Unified School District's own bylaws, and the Education Code. This resolution was duly voted on and it failed. This issue is done. Let's move on to other concerns. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I think so. Um, Lynette Dashner. Hi, my name is Lynette Dashner and I'm a graduating class of 1987 Concord High Minutemen. A few things I wanted to bring up regarding the name of the Minutemen was originally the students and the parents were told we had to, had to change the name because it, we were moving away from something that was non-human. That didn't pass as Ashley just discussed. Now we're being told it's because it's derogatory and discriminating. So it's being tweaked now because it didn't pass the first time. Um, second, we looked it up. There's 32 other schools in the United States that have Minutemen as a mascot. There's one pro team and also a college campus that has the mascot. If it's so derogatory and discriminating, why are there 32 other schools with the same exact mascot? Explain that to me. Um, calling the Minutemen derogatory is shameful. These were our country's first soldiers, right? They protected us. So calling them derogatory is really just an embarrassment. Um, didn't it, last time I was up here, I asked you guys if you had gone by Concord High to actually look at the campus, because I told you it was dirt, rocks, and weeds. Did any of you even have a chance to go by and look at the school? Raise of hands, anybody? Okay, what did you think? Did you see any plants, any flowers, anything besides dirt, rocks, and weeds? You want to spend millions of dollars to change the name of a mascot when our school is in complete disarray. We have so many squirrels, it's actually lifting the pavements. That's a liability. We can trip on campus. Nobody seems to care about that. It is just, you go there, all you see is squirrels running around amongst the dirt and the rocks and the weeds. Um, <clears throat> you guys were um, voted in to be good stewards of funds. Spending millions of dollars on something that does not need to be changed is a failure of duty. Thank you. Thank you. Do show it, Bry. You've met me before, and I brought my uniform this time. You remember. Um, I'm glad to be here tonight. Again, I'm a 1969 graduate of Concord High School. We had the privilege of choosing a mascot for our new school, which has been in effect for over 50 years. The motto of Concord High is the home of the Minutemen. Our other high, other high schools in Concord, such as Clayton Valley, Ugly Eagles, for over 65 years, and Mount Dabla High School, devils, the red devils, for over 122 years. Their motto, victory with honor, have kept their original mascots intact. I researched reasons for changing the mascot at a school and found that due to the dignity for all students, uh, for the dignity of, for all students act, any mascots that are discriminatory or offensive are considered for change. Most of the changes have been schools that use Native American names like Ignatia Valley High School who dropped their mascot from the Warriors to the Wolves. No one's worried about the Golden State Warriors changing their names or kids going to the school wearing a Golden State Warriors shirt. For over 65 years, Clayton Valley High School's mascot is the Ugly Eagles. The word ugly could be considered an offensive or discriminatory word. We can also look at Mount Diablo High School for over 122 years as the mascot has remained the Red Devils. The devil is defined as the personal supreme spirit of evil, a demon and an extremely wicked person. For 122 years, no one's seen to be offended by a mascot that depicts 
evil. When the purpose of going to school is to fulfill learning needs, physical, social, and emotional well being at all stages of their lives. There is no harm in keeping with the Concord High tradition of the Minutemen. It seems you have a couple of people who have been pushing this issue when curriculum, safety, and education should be your focus. I just read that on August 10th of this year, a student was robbed by three other students at Mount Diablo with a weapon involved. That should be shocking. And we're here tonight talking about a mascot. It's disgusting. Why not put the money- If you can wrap up, please, thank you. To better use, you don't like what I'm saying? No, your time That's has- the end of your time. It's been over three minutes. Light is red. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm just gonna say this as I walk away. It is a short-term memory for your current students. It's been a century for us. Thank you. Michael Schneider. As I didn't, I didn't remind folks that it, this public comment period also is three minute limit. Mm -hmm. As with many uh, members here and in the community, I do not agree with this process either. 2,400 views on Nextdoor in 48 hours. Not one of them has supported this um, forced initiative on the community. We've already voted. I'm disappointed that we have a principal who's gone to Pioneer News to go ahead and put indirect pressure on a board member that was not able to go ahead and vote as she went ahead and explained that she's already purchased equipment. But so she really is hopeful that the next time this comes around that board member would. Said board member that was not in attendance had the ability to virtual in on that meeting and grant that vote. Something that I'm not even granted. But you are, and she chose not to do it. Her abstaining is a vote. Um, just in point, as far as more important things, 85% of the pop of uh, Concord High is unable to read. 80% are able to write. 90% are unable to listen. Maybe half of that is because they're teenagers. 81% cannot research or do an inquiry. This is by CAST state scores from last a year ago, last May. With that in mind, the logo, a cocaine bear. I Googled Native American Indians as far as what does a bear symbolize? Healing, medicine, wisdom. You look at that logo, it's a vicious animal. And I'm really concerned. Are we really trying to solve one issue and creating another based on that logo? If anything, Maybe a logo change can be made, but definitely not history. There are always two sides of a coin. I teach my son this, I teach every child. Don't listen to one side, get the other. You are removing that coin from future debates of the positive and any negatives of the Minutemen. Thank you. Thank you. Sherry Bangert Nay Peterson. Good evening. I'm a graduate of Concord High in 1969. I'm really getting tired of changing school names and mascots. I think it's a waste of time and energy when we should be focused on our children. I spent 10 years as a teacher's aide with other districts. And I I I I'm really frustrated with our school um, our our students' uh, rating. It's, a, it's des despicable. We should be number one in the, in the nation and we're on the bottom. That's sad. 
I have a history of over 50 years of the Minutemen being the mascot. Do any of these current students know anything about the Revolutionary War or why the Minutemen even existed? I doubt it. If you don't know your history, history will repeat itself. And that's not always a good thing. How about instead of changing school names and mascots, we have an expectation of these kids getting a great education, an equal education, the way I got the education that I know and, and know a history about. How about we get these kids an opportunity to, to function as good citizens, contributing citizens on the world stage. They have no chance with the, these failing grades. Just saying, I don't get results. I don't think see great results with spelling, reading, math, science, writing. Do parents want their children to grow up illiterate? Why aren't they excelling? You know, we're wasting time and money on, on a mascot. This is disgusting. Thank you. Um, just, uh, and I made it uh, short. A uh, point of order. I just, I just want to, um, I just want to, in, to defend the integrity of our students. Unfortunately, when false information is given, um, the gentleman said that eighty percent of the students, due to CAS testing, um, scored below grade level. I assume that's what he meant. Unfortunately. He was extremely wrong because only 25% of our students at any given high school take the standardized test. It's only given to juniors. So freshmen don't take the test, sophomores don't take the test, and seniors don't take the test. So when he made the um, erroneous statement that 80% um, of the students there are failing, um, it, it's, it's all false information. So again, I'm just talking about the gentleman who made that false statement about our students. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I open up to the board. Madam Chair, uh, as I have repeatedly said, I don't have a big stake in what the mascot at any given school is. I'm about process. That's why it saddens me that we're sitting here tonight looking at revoting when we followed the process that's in place for us to follow. There was a vote. Sometimes you like the vote. Sometimes you don't like the vote. But a functional board moves forward, united, with regardless if you were the yes or no vote. If it would have went the other way, it would have been fine. What bothers me the most is it really in, is indicative of what's going in this country at this time, because from the students that come came up to that podium and wanted another vote, they indicated to us that they were never given the option whether to remain the Minutemen or not. They were told, what do we want for a new which makes me think of what's going on in Ohio and Iowa right now, where they're trying to predetermine who's on a ballot, because if you can jiggle with the ballot, you get the outcome you want. What's even more frightening is when you don't get the vote you want, let's change the system and the way we're voting to get what we want again. That is not how democracy operates. That's not how we operate. I'm sorry to see this. My vote remains the same. If the school wants to do a process in the future at some time that's more inclusive and has a different outcome, it's not about me caring what, for, I, I respect that you're the Minutemen and you're proud of it, but that's not where my vote's coming from. My vote is coming from process, doing what's right. And if we can't show the kids that their vote, no matter what their vote is counts and whatever their vote is, we respect it, then we're not doing our job here. I would like to request of the superintendent I would like an investigation to know how this made it to the newspaper that it was going to be on our agenda before I knew anything about it. I would also like to in the future, because of the concern, I think, unfortunately, this is thing, a thing we're going to live with, changing mascots. And because it is expensive in the future, I would like to see us have a policy that says that our uniforms do not have a picture of the mascot, but simply the school names on them as we move forward, because that's how it used to be when I was a Pacifica Spartan playing against the Concord Minutemen. So that is my comments for this evening. Or did you have something to say? I would like to inquire about the process that we need to undertake this evening. Yes, so we looked at this issue. What we have today is not a reconsideration of a motion. It is something called a renewal of a motion. Uh, 
under the terms that under the Roberts rule of uh, um, a procedure, uh, a member of the board can have a motion that was not granted, uh, set for further consideration uh, in a subsequent meeting. So uh, as far as our process and following our policies, our guidelines, as well as our, our uh, instructions from, the, from, from both the, the California Board of Education, which by the way is our oversight uh, institution, not the CSBA, um, we are, the process is correct and we can bring this issue forward for the board to reconsider or consider. Thank you very much. It, that is my understanding as well regarding the process. Christy Count. Thank you. I just wanted to, um, as I was the board member who was not present at the last meeting, wanted to re-explain where I was at that point in time because I was not actually able to uh, uh, to call into the meeting or attend the meeting virtually because I was on an airplane. I was flying from here to Israel and Palestine on an educational trip with other school board members and superintendents from across California. Uh, I did not think that my absence at this particular meeting was going to uh, be an issue. I was not aware that um, that there were any items on the agenda that were going to be a close vote. So I was actually surprised to see that happen while I was absent. Um, so I appreciate that we have looked into the legal requirements to be able to put it onto the agenda and that it was put onto the agenda um, and that we have the opportunity to discuss this tonight. Thank you. So I do not believe that uh, you should accept the blame for your inability to be in attendance at the meeting. Uh, I beg your pardon. Then you haven't read all the email. Thank you. Um, and uh, the vote is what it was at that moment. Based on the outcome of the vote, and requests by individuals on both sides to review input and information that was presented to the board, I went back and reviewed the information. And I will be changing my vote from a no to a yes at this particular meeting. This, I believe that this was originated by students. I believe that the students today did not feel as welcomed as perhaps all of you did back in 1969, nor do they always feel valued uh, at the school. It's a time for new attitudes, and if changing a mascot will make students feel welcome, embraced, and empower them to participate more at their school, then I will support this. It took much courage to undertake this initiative by this small group of students. They have had ridicule. They have had uh, been called out. Um, and the email to the board hasn't been pleasant in every situation. So I do believe that the courage of the students who have launched this initiative should be uh, embraced by this board as the new image of Concord High School. Trustee Barris. Um, I'd like to talk about it from like a perspective from the students. Um, I don't intend Concord. Um, I've gone like once and it is kind of a nice school, but I talked to a few of the students because I got the information from um, Anai and I talked to them about their opinions, um, their experience during the process. And from what I heard is uh, mm, uh, they don't even know what a minute man is and that they do believe that the process, they didn't really like get a choice and if they wanted to or didn't want to I acknowledge that and I I do agree with that but I also they also said that although they didn't vote on wanting to change it or not 
they still agree with changing it because they do believe that using a human for a mascot isn't the best idea as well as I I acknowledge that you had you went to that school and you do have a valid opinion but it has changed a lot since those times like since the 1900s it's changed to the two two thousands um and now the demographics has changed the major the majority of that school is latinx so they don't really know much about the minutemen and it's not really in the in their culture and they don't feel represented with that mascot so without being represented they don't feel included and the pride that you guys feel so i i'd like to change the mascot to something that they could feel pride in and trust in thank you um So removing the Minuteman as a mascot doesn't erase American history and doesn't change what students are taught in US history, as far as I understand. Um, because most of us, I don't, did not learn my US history or I'm trying to think of the mascots I've lived through, but I, I think all of my mascots in my life have been animals. Um, but the mascot isn't a, it's just a, it's not, a tool of education. It's what you cheer for. Um, I'm very proud of the students that brought this forward and did all that work. I'm very, the students today are not the students of my generation, anyone, not even yours, and you're much younger, because the students today stand up in a way that we never could. Um, they recognize um, things that are wrong and injustices and have courage in ways that I certainly never did at this age. And that is how and why this could move forward and how and why you, the, the speakers today and people in our inbox could feel so differently. Um, I'm an extremely like, um, I don't can't think of the right word. I am a, you all know, went to Cal. I am Go Bears, we lose all the time. I am so passionate about Go Bear, about the Bears. I'm spirited, thank you. And I have been actually at every level, really geeky like that, because I was in the band. But um, my passion is less for the Bears or the Bull Pups, Hanford High. Um, my passion is for the school that I went to and the values that they taught me and the, the, the community that I had there. And that's what connects us is that I went to Hanford High. None of you heard of it. But that's where I went. And I'm a proud Hanford High alumna. I'm a proud University of California, Berkeley alumna. It doesn't matter if they changed the mascot today. It doesn't change my pride or my feelings whatsoever. And if that changing of that mascot um, helps make my community feel um, included and just more welcomed and a sense of belonging, I am all for it. No matter that I was born in the 1900s, <laughs> the 1900s and experienced in the 1900s and that it's 30 some odd years later from my high school mascot. Like if they change it today, that wouldn't matter because I'm still proud of the school and the community that I went to and that I come from it has nothing to do with that. Um, so with that, if there's nothing else, I'll entertain a motion. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I just did want to say one more thing. Just you if know, you if you the public comment period is closed, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, I I just want to appreciate um, the students and the staff and the process that they went through um, to really consider what it means to belong at Concord High, what it means to create a welcoming and inclusive campus. That has been one of the themes that we have had as a district and as a board. We've been working to make sure that people, no matter their, uh, their ethnicity, their gender identity, um, that they feel welcome and included on our campuses. Um, to uh, the references that this is gonna cost millions of dollars, um, you know, on the resolution today, it's the it it lists the fiscal impact of being two hundred thousand um, dollars. My experience with the um, going through it as a parent at Ignacio Valley High School recently, um, 
there were uh, alumni who were against that as well, um, who threatened that the school would never be supported by alumni again. And we actually saw the reverse happen. Um, the school, the alumni have come out of the woodwork to support the school with the new mascot um, more than I've ever seen. Um, the school campus has um, had a, a huge renewal. Um, there are new plants and trees that alumni have fundraised for. Um, and, and people have really come together around that new identity. It's incredible to see. Um, so I am all for supporting the students and the staff who worked so hard on this um, to help them reach their vision of a welcoming, inclusive campus for all. And I just have to say, I'm all for supporting students as well. Mm -hmm. It's just unfortunate to me that some of the board members think their vote, they should get a vote when the kids feel they didn't get a vote. Thank you, I'll entertain a motion. I do believe there were numerous votes that happened on that campus. And so with that, I will move to approve resolution 2324, adopting recommendation by Concord High School students to retire Minutemen mascot and adopt the mascot bears as elected by the students. I'll second that motion. Trustee Barrios. Yes. And that passes four one with a student trustee affirming as well. Eleven point zero. So yes, we have um, we have some personnel appointments. We'll wait until. So we have Miss Viana from the Human Resources Department who will be. I'm introducing um, item 11.1, .1, and um, I believe we are going to be meeting middle school principal and program specialist categories and um, site-based site-based folks. Thank you. Yeah. The human resources department. Can, I, is bringing can you speak into the microphone yep. because I have had to listen <laughs> to our meetings before, and you can't hear unless you speak okay. into the mic. How about now? Yes. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The Human Resources Department is bringing for the board's review and ratification the personnel appointments for middle school and program specialist categorical programs site based. Douglas Corbin, Principal, Sequoia Middle School. Xiaofan Leopold, Program Specialist at Oak Grove Middle School. With that, I leave this ratification in the hands of the board. Can I get a motion? I'm very sad that Douglas Corbin is, I don't see him here because I worked with him in the past on Bay Point. I was looking forward to uh, proving his appointment, so I will do that. I move to ratify the appointments of middle school principal and program specialist categorical, categorical program sites as listed. Second. Trustee Barrios. Yes. Welcome. Congratulations. We're going to have them come up after after we do all the appointments. Yes. Thank you. 11.2. The Human Resources Department is bringing for the board's review and ratification the personnel appointments for the high school vice principal Peter Crutchfield for Ignacio Valley High School. With that, I leave this ratification in the hands of the board. Madam President, I move the board approve the appointment of Pre Peter Crutchfield as a uh, vice principal at Ignacio Valley High School. Second. Trustee Barrios. Yes. Welcome. Eleven point three. 
The Human Resources Department is bringing for the board's review and ratification the personnel appointments for the following administrative positions. Jamie Jackson, Social Work Specialist. Emilio Perdomo, Social Work Specialist. Merritt Rollins, Social Work Specialist. And Carla Monique <laughs> Beal, Social Work Specialist. Lawrence Rashid, Instructional Program Specialist, CSAS. Rosie Reed, Program Specialist, Foster Youth. Alexandra Emmett, Director of Food and Nutritional Services. With that, I leave the ratification in the hands of the board. Madam President, I move to ratify the appointments of administrators as presented. I'll second that. Trustee Barrios. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Do you want, are you gonna? Yeah, so if any, if any of our new appointees would like to come up and maybe introduce who they who they brought along with them or just say anything to the board, that would be, that would be appropriate at this time. Yeah, there we go. Everyone should want to. No, no pressure. I'm applying the pressure. <laughs> good we want to meet you okay hello again my name is carla monique Ville. i am from the bay area and i do have experience working within school districts i am a social worker specialist and i have a background in education social work and i have um actually spent a lot of my years working directly with youth I have a fondness for high school students, adolescents, so I'm very happy to be at Concord High School. And I am looking forward to bringing my experience to the school and taking what has already been established as I see a great program and giving what I can to the program and to the students and the school community. So I'm happy to be here. Thank you, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, welcome. Thank you, uh, first to Jamie for letting me cut so we can go home. <laughs> Second, thank you to the board for all of the opportunities you have given me over the years. Thank you, Dr. Clark. Thank you especially to Dr. Stucky Smith for taking a chance on me, moving me out of the classroom into this role. And thank you also for the mentorship. Um, I look forward to continuing to serve the students and the families of this community. No, I'm gonna go home. Welcome. <laughs> Congratulations. Hello, everyone. My name is James. You can Jackson. fix that microphone. Oh. There you go. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. Hello, everyone. My name is Jamie Jackson. Um, I'll start off saying I've been a social worker for the last three years. Um, I'm coming from uh, Cal State East Bay, where I graduated my master's program, first one in my family to attend college and uh, graduate with a master's and a bachelor's. Um, also, I'm just here to support the students. I'm currently will be based out of um, Initial Valley High School, so I'm a social work specialist there. My goal is just to help kids get to college or, you know, maybe talk about trade schools and help them, you know, provide a safe space for them as well and make it comfortable for them. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Dr. Clark, before we lose them, did we want to take a photo? Oh. For the ones who just went out into the lobby. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah, your, your family. Also, um, I'm alongside my girlfriend, Raven. She's here supporting oh, me as well. Come on now. That's all right. We're going to let them go, Sheree. So it's be fine. They, we, yes. Good evening to the superintendent and the board of education. My name is Peter Crutchfield, and I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity to serve as vice principal at Ignacio Valley High School. It is my goal, plan, and hope to provide a new energy to the position. I also want to ensure that our students transition successfully through high school and help them prepare for college, career, and life. Thank you again for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Is that everybody? Congratulations. Congratulations. 
Um, all right. Uh, we move on to board member reports 12.0. Um, and we have, well, I had, I thought of this and I'm, pro we have two meetings in a row, um, which means like next week you may not have anything to say, or so you could spread it across two meetings or <laughs> as we talk about our summers, or you could talk now and not talk next week. Um, I, it's your own choices, um, but would anyone like to start? Who's itching to tell us what's going on? <laughs> no one. I'll Trust start me, only because I'm starting with an apology. Um, but between vacation and still having my family visiting, I've missed a lot of events because I don't always have my grandkids here. So I've been enjoying them. And I will just say quickly that I, um, the first day of school, I went to all the schools in Bay Point. And then on the second day, I went to Sun Terrace and Holbrook and Wren and Olympic and Mount Devil High School. And I have to say kudos to all the staff, all the employees. The kitchen staff were there feeding the kids. The custodians had the school sparkling. The principals and administrators were like ducks. You know, you, it looks like they're so smooth across the water. And I know a million things were going on underwater that I didn't see. But the most important thing is all the parents and fam, family and kids I saw were smiling and happy. And so I think we're off to a good start. Anyone? Okay, see, I was going to call on you first, <laughs> but I didn't want to like, you know, to make you nervous. Thank you, Trusty Barrios. <laughs> um, honestly, I just want to give my thanks to Miss Laura Jurnick, um, Dr. Clark, and Anai because without them, I don't know what I would be I would be doing right now. I'd be so lost right now. And I honestly want to give them my thanks because they helped me so much. Like I cannot express how much they helped me. They're really nice. I just want to thank them. You're welcome. Okay, I'll do my long one. Okay. That way next week. Next week. You'll, uh -huh. you'll be really I'm going to time you next week, 30 right. seconds. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just because I was, I've been gone. So I wanted to say welcome back to school to everybody. Um, I was out of town for much of the summer, including an educational trip to ed Israel and Palestine, as mentioned. Um, I was also volunteer staff at a Girl Scout camp up in the mountains, um, where it was a total adjustment for me to completely be away from my cell phone. Um, but I highly recommend it. It's a, it was a well-needed respite. Our family also hosted students who were visiting here from Japan, which was a really heartwarming cultural experience. These international connections have bolstered my resolve to ensure that our district teaches students and staff how to build bridges across differences. Students will need this skill to survive and thrive in a global economy, even if they stay right here at home. The schools that I saw and heard about in Israel and Palestine are separate and unequal. Only 6% of the schools there have a mix of Jewish and Arab students. When they do try to meet or study together in some way, it generally has to be done in English because neither of them learn both Hebrew, Hebrew and Arabic fluently in school. It's one language or the other, not both. I was really excited though to visit an international baccalaureate school there. Uh, this enrolls um, very intentionally one third Jewish, one third Arab and one third international students. Their director who spoke with us had made real strides towards justice both in his school and within government policy. Uh, so my hope is to be able to connect them with our Mount Diablo International Baccalaureate Schools for a global connection. Um, and the school has a focus on conflict resolution um, and the international students often come from um, war-torn countries. And so it really is um, intensive discussions about how to bring peace. It's pretty incredible. Um, and I think right here in Concord, we can build a stronger connection with the Diablo Japanese American Club, which is uh, right around the corner from Ignacio Valley High. It has a Saturday Japanese language school and also all kinds of cultural enrichment, including taiko drumming. Um, so I'm excited about just building those kind of connections. Another highlight for me this summer was the Ava Suddeth Academy, watching Dr. Lamont Francis bringing incoming sixth grade focal scholars to Riverview Middle School for a two week summer bridge orientation, academic support and enrichment. Um, I truly enjoyed getting to join students in the body percussion class that was taught by the amazing Antoine Davis. 
Antoine has performed all over the world, including in the Broadway show Stomp. It was just, it was magical. Um, it's by strategically investing in positive, culturally responsive pedagogy and building up tight knit communities like these that we that we will begin to break down long standing inequities in our public schools. So I'm deeply grateful to all who lead this work with hope and determination. On my first day of school, after dropping off my 10th grader, I visited the new principals that ha that happened to be in my trustee area uh, to welcome and wish them well. And schools were humming and smiles were everywhere. It was just beautiful to see. Um, lastly, the parent conference on Saturday felt like a joyful reunion to run into so many parents, students, and staff. I was impressed with the wide variety of workshops that we now have in English, Spanish, and .e. Uh, the room full of free backpacks, books, and school supplies, and the gym full of community organizations sharing their information. It was jam-packed, totally full. Um, not to mention the super tasty lunch from our food service. So um, I want to say thank you to Mount Diablo Adult School for organizing and hosting that. Um, and once again, um, happy first week of school to everyone. Thank you. May Trustee Mayo or Trustee McFerrin, you can fight for the next. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, it's good to see everyone again. And um, I'm just really excited about this school year. Um, it, uh, it is hard for me at the beginning of the school year, especially to attend many events, but I did get to go to the back to school mixer at Mount Diablo Elementary on uh, last Tuesday, the 8th. Um, and it was really fun to see, um, like new kindergartners, like one of whom I know, which is why I was there, um, and just kind of finding their classrooms. There was a scavenger, sort of like, almost like a scavenger hunt with stickers, um, and an ice cream social. And, um, I could just tell that, um, kind of the parents who volunteered by the parents and, and families who came with their children, um, by the way that campus looked that it was just, um, that so much care had already been put into this school year. And I just really appreciated um, just how positive it felt on that campus, seeing those kids so excited to get to school. So um, that's all I have to share. I just welcome, I just wish everyone the very best of luck this year. Just email. So I would like to welcome everybody back to uh, school this year. I know that many of you have not even left school <laughs> throughout the summer. And I want to applaud all the effort that's gone into planting, planning and starting the school year, welcoming students and families onto campuses. I attended the uh, summer high school graduation. <laughs> and then um, uh, I attended the Administrator Professional Development Day, the new teacher orientation, which is always exciting to see uh, the new teachers um, in Mount Diablo School District. I believe there are 176 of them. Um, and then um, the Ava Suddeth event as well. What um, I was, a, I didn't visit schools on the opening day of school, but I did visit school, um, 18 of them in fact, prior to school opening. And I wanna compliment our custodians and our administrators for their efforts in um, preparing schools, um, you know, floors were polished, doors were um, welcoming, and then windows were washed. I mean, you often you don't think about windows, but when a window sparkles, uh, it just lets the sunshine in. So I want to thank all of the individuals who have helped um, with the facilities in preparing for the opening of school as well. And like everyone else, I wish you a great school near year, and I will be on your campus soon. Thank you. Thank you. Um, did a parent conference, yay. I, how the summer graduation was like just right now. How did I totally forget about that? Fabulous and beautiful. I'm so glad that we do that um, for our students who just needed a couple more weeks to finish. Um, so I think that's amazing that we give them that chance to walk. Um, and I, um, okay, I want, I want to just give kudos to our HR department, um, for, so when we got the, I don't know if you all read the resumes today, like, that's an amazing group of people that we just like, an amazing group of people, um, when 
we clearly attract who we clearly attracted somehow to this district um, who are extremely well qualified. Um, at least on paper, I assume they'll demonstrate that qualification in their actions. And I'm really excited because a lot of the positions, especially being social workers and um, vice president, vice president, vice principals, um, which I feel like typically have more um, closer relationships with students and families. I'm really excited as we are really putting focus on that. And I just want to give the example of how important that relationship building is. Um, I'm really excited that my daughter had a smooth, you know, whatever day this is, Dr. Clark usually tell it four, wait, five, day five, yeah, um, has had a smooth transition into the new school year. But what warms me is like, you know, she did not want to go back to school, of course. However, on the first day, she can come home and say, um, I already know who my two favorite teachers are, you know, and it happens to be math and science. Um, which isn't that much of a surprise, but like that she really enjoyed their energy and how they related to the classroom. Um, but more than that, because my child is ex an extreme introvert, um, she stopped into her wellness center to say how, like she said, I saw, um, the, I'm not going to name names. I saw Miss So and So, and I'm like, and I said hi, and I said, did you just see her in the hall? No, I went in, which means she seeked her out, and to me, that's just another demonstration of a um, strong adult-child connection that was made in the previous year, and how important that is, and how that makes me feel as a parent, and I know I can't be alone um, to know that when I send my child to one of our schools, that there's adults that care about her. Um, and that she feels that and understands that. And that's what makes her experience um, a positive one. It, it's like for all the other, you know, annoying things that happen when you're a teenager, um, that this can help make it less annoying. So thank you to everyone who's made the new school year um, smooth and welcoming to all of our students. And that's and when I say everyone, I literally mean everyone in this district. So thank you, Dr. Clark. Right. Thank you. Thank you. And um, just before I begin, and I, I have a, just a couple of announcements here. I don't have a PowerPoint, but I just um, want to welcome everyone to, to our first governing board meeting of the academic year. I want to just, I'm not going to read all four of our LCAP goals, but goal number one, um, it's about creating mm -hmm. an environment where all students are in a safe and welcoming um, environment. Um, goal two really talks about our high quality and culturally proficient and responsive staff and the work that they do. And goal three is really about partnering with parents, family, and community to empower them and keep them informed and engaged. And goal four really focuses on our, on our most neediest students and, um, and the specific goals that we have and the, the special programs that we have to bring those, bring those students to where they need to be. So um, with that, we, over the summer, we completed summer school and we had, um, you know, many dedicated employees who came and, and worked with our students throughout the summer. Um, I, I know the last thing students want to do is right after school gets out is to come back and go to summer school, but they did. And um, our summer schools were full. The only places where we didn't have summer school were places that were getting, uh, that had major construction projects over the um, over the summer. We also all celebrated our summer graduation. Again, those those students that, that just needed a little extra time to finish up those credits, but those students and their families so appreciated that opportunity. So when we talk about the things that we do as a district and um, those special things that maybe not everyone sees, that was a, a very special day in the hot sun at Concord High School, um, out in the quad, and, and it, was, it was extremely special. Um, also, I wanna recognize the, the Ava Suttis Academy, the Summer Bridge Program held for those students. And, um, and, and also our CARES program was just, was just humming over, over summer. And just to name some of the stuff that they were doing, the Garden Academy, um, different theme weeks, arts and crafts, sports, um, nutrition lessons, college and career readiness, um, college tours, financial literacy classes, college essay prep, all kinds of stuff took place with, um, with, with some of our, our CARES programs. Um, 
The other one here, uh, TK, TK8 students enrolled activities included back to school readiness, STEAM projects, fitness education, open gyms, garden nutrition activities, um, develop friendships, giving our kids opportunity to interact and develop friendships before they step on the campus. Um, and one elementary site participated in a, in a drone camp led by Ignacio Valley High School students. So, I mean, like, I mean, I, I could just stop there, but we had the, then we had the build up to the school year where I, I really want to recognize the Ed Services team. Um, we had a plethora of professional development opportunities for, for our students. We first opened up with our new, our new teachers who have the privilege of serving at our Title I schools. And we were able to bring them in a day early, provide uh, um, training for them, really get them a, um, a acquainted with our, our, our policies, procedures, with our, our goals, our mindset. And, and they were all just excited, raring to go. The following day, we welcomed all of our new teachers. And I gotta tell you, um, I have a pulse on what's going on here. And we had in, in, in this room full of new employees, we asked who is right out of school and this is your first job. And probably about anywhere from a fourth to a third of the, of the room hands raised. Then it was, who is this? Who is coming to us from somewhere else? Most of the hands in the room 60, 70% of the folks in the room are from other districts. So we're attracting people who want to come to this district to do the type of work that we're doing in this district. And that is putting kids first and really being committed to kids and giving them the highest quality education possible. So we were very just um, excited about that. Then the day before school, we had more professional development, new social studies adoption training took place, benchmark ass assessments and illuminate. I see Ray in the back there, um, VAPA team planning, touch math, science and science electives. We had a, um, you know, we had a, we had a, a training for all of our counselors throughout the district coming together, sharing best practices, sharing their, their, their goals, what they do day to day and, and how they support students. And then on the classified side, I really want to recognize Renee Rogers from our um, special ed department. She really helped in leading and organizing our, our um, classified training, which took place at Concord High School. We took over the entire school and had a keynote speaker come. And also um, classified staff were able to go and sign up for myriad um, sessions, ranging from school safety to personal wellness, to de-escalations, all kinds of things that, that you can imagine um, were, were um, available on that particular day. So just a great kickoff to preparing our staff to welcome our students. Then um, school started on Thursday, August 10th, fantastic day. I started my morning. I don't even remember all the schools I, I went to, but I focused strictly on elementary schools. And I started off at Meadow Homes, went to uh, Cambridge, Ignacio Valley Elementary, Fair Oaks, uh, uh, Mount Diablo L, Highlands. And when I went on to every campus, I seeked out three people. I found the office manager, asked how the opening of school was. They, all of them said it was excellent and it was smooth and, um, and, and it was just unlike before. Um, you know, we, we put some other things in place now, but they were just beyond. Um, next, I went to the custodian and asked the custodians how the opening of school was. I thanked them for their work because every campus that I went to did not have a piece of trash on it. They looked immaculate. I was very proud with how our schools look. And I went to the custodians and thanked them. And then I went to the cafeteria and thanked the, um, the, the folks working in the, in the cafeterias. And then I went out and visited classrooms and I saw families that were so excited to bring their, bring their students to school. I mean, we have to remember, um, we have um, TK and kindergarten, um, you know, over a couple thousand of them in our district now. And those families coming in, the excitement on those kids' faces and on the family faces, we, we even, um, we didn't have any of these set up officially, but we need a room where our grieving um, TK and K parents can go and get out of the windows of our, of our kindergarten classes because they were just, they were just, um, you know, over the top. The following day, I, I went to, to more elementary schools, um, you know, this, this next week and finishing up this week, I'll hit up our middle schools and, and high schools, but just a, 
a very, very smooth opening to school. We welcome, you know, close to 29,000 students to our, to our campuses. Um, teachers that I saw um, were all in good spirits. They were excited to be back with their students. Um, I know that we spend the first 18 days of school because of our, um, because of our agreement balancing classes it it how it goes we worked extremely hard over the summer sending out surveys to families thank you families who who filled out those surveys because it really helped us with dropping families um we've opened up a new enrollment center where we were able to take families and and not have families go to multiple sites to enroll their kids they can go to one place enroll their students if their students need um testing for for uh, second language then we got the testing center there. We've now moved our um, nurse down there and our and kind of our 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 health department down there, so that if students have medical plans and things like that, it's 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 one stop that they need to make. So all this is done with with really customer service for our for our parents. That's at Willow Creek. Um, um, we've we've created a whole um, wing um, for for the enrollment center. So super excited about that and. Um, so we're still balancing classes. I, I um, you know, yeah, it's 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 difficult sometimes to balance classes. We would like to do this in the summer, um, but but it's not it's not possible. So we do the best we can. We want to make crystal crystal clear and be sure that before we move a teacher or before we move a a student or anything or have to displace a family, that we've exhausted all opportunities. So we're doing warm body counts every day. We're calling families who haven't showed up. We are um, just trying to make our schools as welcoming as possible to our to our families, and um, and so we're we're very excited about that. Then again, the uh, parent conference uh, uh, was a, was a huge success. We had two sessions, so we had a session from you know nine thirty to ten thirty, then another one from ten forty five to eleven forty five, and then we served them lunch. Per per each group, there were thirty three different sessions that families could could attend. Thirty three. And they were all they were all um, led by either district staff or community partners. So it was anything and everything you can think of. So I'm extremely proud um, about how we opened um, this school year. I'm extremely proud for all the new employees that came to work with us. I'm extremely proud of um, of all of our staff who went above and beyond to make sure that teachers had what they need needed, that instructional aides had what they needed. That our students had what they needed when they when they came when they came through our doors, and I know, um, you know, I'm not going to put her on the spot, but I know Miss Hickey's here, someone who you know is an office manager at a high school, and she really knows the work that it takes and the love and care that our staff put in to making sure that students have what they need to be successful. So, um, so again, I, I couldn't be more proud of the work that we're doing, and I really owe it to the leadership of this board by you know setting setting those goals, um, really setting the tone for our district that we're going to serve all of our students at the highest level, regardless of what school they attend or regardless of um, what backgrounds they have. And that's something that I'm extremely proud of that we're doing here in Mount Diablo. So that concludes my reports, unless there's any questions from the trustees. Great, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, we move on to the consent agenda. Um, um, items listed under consent are considered routine and will be removed. I mean, I'm sorry, will be approved or adopted by a single motion. There'll be no separate discussion of these items. However, any item may be removed from the consent agenda upon the request of any member of the board and acting upon separately. Okay, so we have public comment on three items. Can we take those public comments and then, and or is there anything that anyone wants to remove from consent? 14.1. Okay. So Michael, you can come and speak on all three, well, I guess, yeah. <laughs> Uh, all three, no, all three items. I was like three minutes for each item or yeah. So first 
Oh, okay. You wrote 14, 11, 12, 13, and 23. So, okay. That's okay. Comment. And uh, would love to go ahead and sit down with you and discuss the last three years mm. and that data for me. Okay. All right. Um, my concerns with um, the it was Fair Oaks and Mount Diablo Elementary active something. Um, this is a same vendor for two different schools. One is Mount Diablo Elementary, and the other one is for um, Fair Oaks, which is the Title I school. I'm concerned with use of the Title I funding, as usually that is um, followed by, for, uh, by basic funding, LCFF, LCF supplemental, and then Title I funding is cherry on the top. For Fair Oaks, it's the only funding source, and I'm concerned about the subplant supplemental rules for an S, uh, ESA. Also, um, this particular school for the last two years, per their uh, student site plan, has not had an ELAC, which is also required for all Title I schools. Um, the, the reports indicate to be determined. Um, it can be assigned to the district. Maybe someone forgot to put that in. But again, I'm just concerned with the Title I um, funding of that item. <clears throat> There's also a resource inequity. If you look at El Dorado, um, excuse me, Mount Diablo Elementary, there's two to three personnel for a population of 140 kids. But yet there's only one for almost 240 kids over at Fair Oaks. So I'm wondering why is there a discrepancy in resources and the amount of programs that are being allotted to one school and not the other. Um, finally, on this item, there is no metrics or data to tell us if this is even working or not. This is a requirement of Title I funding. You have to be able to show that it's the money is improving services for students. Title I funds could be used to create a monitoring program where we could go ahead and do those metrics of knowing how many children each year are in the tier one, tier two, tier three. And so this is a matter of why are we spending money year after year with no metrics and no data to support it. 14.23, um, I'm wondering why we're paying an outside source to store public documents as what we've been doing for years under Google Docs. Um, I don't understand why we're going outside, spending so much money when thousands of dollars could be saved. Finally, the funding source of that is LCFF Supplemental. Again, this is for high need students to improve services over basic aid. This has no opportunity to go ahead. It makes no sense. And therefore I want, I'd like clarification as to why we're not using basic LCFF funds for 14.23. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, I can have a motion for the consent agenda. I move the board adopt the consent agenda except for 14.9, which will be considered separately. May I get a second? Second. Trustee Barrios. Yes. <clears throat> and that passes and we'll go to 14.9, which becomes 15.1. Um, so I am in support of the current amount of funding for the fingerprinting, but I know that individuals across our community, parents in particular, are interested in volunteering and uh, appreciated the convenience of being able to um, 
procure their fingerprinting through the district. I was wondering if we are going to be able to offer this again, and uh, will those families who need low cost or no cost fingerprinting be able to be accommodated? Dr. Rubio is going to respond to this again. <laughs> um, good evening, everyone. Um, it has been uh, about three, maybe three and a half years since we have provided that service to our parent community from our offices here. Um, I, I, I endeavor and we endeavor to do everything we can for all of our stakeholders. And so I think in that spirit, uh, we, we always want to say yes. Uh, I also at the same time want to be honest with the board regarding our current capacity. Uh, we are pretty stretched right now in terms of turnover and the number of employees we have. Um, we had a new person start this week. We have another one starting next week. Uh, we had five turnovers uh, in the last three months, and we're not that large. And so, um, so my my fear is, um, and one part I would like to say, yes, let's support all the parents and have them come in again like we used to. Uh, but I, and I'm also trying not to increase our staffing. Uh, number. So um, I leave it up to the board if, if you, that's the direction you want us to move in, and we'll do whatever you want. But I just want to make sure I lay out the uh, the cards clearly too, in terms of what, we, what we're grappling with right now. I, I, so, so certainly we're, we're having some difficulty in some, making sure we're getting everything else done right now, the beginning of the year. So it's, it's an even harder idea right now. But the, the other thing I would add is that in speaking to Ms. Sachs, we have been talking about how do we continue to encourage the schools. We do have schools that are reimbursing parents and when they send them, the, you know, they'll get the form from us, so they'll get it from the school site, and they will reimburse the ones who are saying, hey, I'm not sure I can afford to do that. Uh, so we can also take that approach, if that's something the board is interested in, trying to make sure our schools have that written into their site plans. Uh, we have increased site budgets in the last couple of years, so that I think probably is possible um, as another way we can support parent involvement. You know, I was just going to say with our limited staff, we've really been focusing on just getting staff in there and most most districts are not um, are not doing staff are, are not doing uh, volunteer fingerprints out of the office. Um, now, in in some cases, it is written into the LCAP to provide, um, you know, reimbursement to, to families. Um, we've pushed that money out to our school sites and we do have some school sites that wrote that into their plans, but if it becomes a, a bigger issue and we have to do much more of a, of a global thing, I think we're definitely open to that and we could probably find some funds to help that. But in terms of, uh, we're just providing that service for staff as of now. I just want to say, I think I appreciate um, Trustee Mayo bringing this up in, in terms of particularly for families who may not be able to afford the fee. Um, one thing that I have seen us do at times um, is to hold uh, an event at a school site and um, provide both the fingerprinting and the TB test at the same time. Um, and what I like about that model is you're also not necessarily asking people to pay out of pocket and get reimbursed if they're if they don't have a lot of income to begin with that also could be challenging for them to do so um, being able to just provide it for free on site you know in a targeted way in places where it's needed the most um, I would love to see more of that happening to the degree that is feasible um, by our school sites and our staff I certainly appreciate that our first priority at this point in time needs to be with uh, our new employees and people that we're onboarding. Uh, and I, I will always speak up on behalf of this. So just know it won't be the first time. It's not the first and it won't be the last time that I bring this up because I think that um, uh, parents on campus and parents volunteering in students' classrooms is an important example for our students to see and experience and for students to see other students' parents and families volunteering in classrooms is important. So, um, you know, as I said, I will support this motion as it is, but you will hear from me again as we look for more solutions. With that, I move uh, that we approve Agenda item 15.1, fingerprinting. Second. Trustee Barrios. Yes.
And that passes. 17.0, business action items. 17.1, review and potential approval of the annual evaluation of outdated documents to be destroyed. I'll know who would handle that. <laughs> who put, is that a shredder? Yes, shredder. <laughs> And I just make a motion to approve the destruction of said records. <laughs> Second. Trustee Barrios. Yes. I just want to say that, it, that I did ask one question, which was, um, you know, is this following the recommendations of, you know, how old documents should be before they reach the state of outdated um, and uh, best practices? And the answer was yes. So just Great. to let the public know. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I was I was searching to see who the administrator was on this item, and it was me. So oh. <laughs> this comes out comes out of our office, and I know that I know it's already been approved. But Laura and Cesar work extremely close on on this, and uh, yeah, and I often witness it taking place. So. <laughs> Thank you. That passes unanimously. Seventeen point two review and potential approval of revisions to administrative regulation sixty one fifteen. We have Jennifer Sachs as the administrator on this one. If there's any questions or <laughs> superintendent, I was going to hand it off to you since you <laughs> yeah, seem to be on, on point tonight. Um, as we committed to the board, as there's been changes in CSBA policy and regulations, we've been trying to bring them back in batches. This one has actually just been revised. And if you take a look at the underline, it is to acknowledge Juneteenth National Independence Day, which is June 19th. And that is the only change on this administrative regulation. Thank you. And I know that was something that was requested um, of us by mm -hmm. by employees at some point in time um, and families, and now it's statewide. So this is uh, really great to see us aligning with um, state policies. So I move to approve updated the administrative regulation 6115 as presented. Second that. Trustee Barrios. Yes. And that passes unanimously. 17.3, review and potential approval of resolution 23-24-03, Community Facilities District 1, Measure A. If you have any questions, we have uh, Ms. Coslow and Mr. Sidford here to answer any questions, but um, there's no presentation with this. Mm -hmm. Madam President, I would move the board approve. Um, the resolution 23 slash 2403, the community facilities district number one uh, resolution, Measure A. Second. Trustee Barrios. Yes. And that passes. 17.4, review and potential approval of the revised 21 to 24, sorry, 2021 to 2024 local control accountability plan. Michael Schneider. Ooh, last one. <laughs> I really appreciate the board and superintendent for uh, being able to to listen to these. First of all, I want to thank uh, Jennifer Sachs, who all last year, as I went through training through the CDE, through websites, LA County, uh, Office of Education, Riverside, San Bernardino, San Diego, Ventura, so many others, um, as to what can we do with the SPSAs and the LCAPs. Um, this particular district, um, happened to have quite a few little flags that came up. And, um, and I thank her for walking me through some of this. And uh, these are some of just the um, um, highlights. Uh, first of all, um, due to this process, the County of Office of Education was notified um, by myself. And we did uh, confirm that it, the LCFF 
needed to be increased by $25 million. Uh, I look forward to working with the district on how we can expand ASP, tutors, and uh, most importantly, uh, children to be at the CYC who spoke earlier. Um, I would like to go ahead and mention that there is a problem still with the baseline data on page 17 and 18. I'm not sure why it was changed, um, but reading scores for first grade I ready in 2019 should have been 61.5%, second grade 66.2, third grade 67.7. For math, grades one, two, three on the I ready should have been 54.1, 56.1, and 58.5. That is what's been on the uh, 21, 22 LCAP and the 22, 23 LCAP. So again, not sure why that's changed, but the CDE is very specific that no baseline is to be changed unless the data source has changed. And in this case, it's been consistent. It's been iReady. Um, for improvements for this year, I really look forward to getting parents, education partners, and labor at the table with the district on as a year-long process. This is what the CDE has been recommending. No more single meaning. Here's a product, go ahead and give us your approval. Um, both LCAP and CISPAS should be multiple meanings. And this is another reason we need to incorporate virtual. Um, one problem that we have had with the SPSAs and we're still looking into it is the funding. When you go to budget summaries on most of the school district uh, school sites, it is blank. We do not have data for budget summaries on multiple sites. And as I've mentioned before earlier, um, there's also uh, many sites that are supposed to have ELAC committees and they have either not signed it, they've left it blank. And therefore um, that is the foundation for the LCAP. So we really need to go ahead and work immediately to go ahead and provide equitable access to low income families that have been traditionally not able to attend PACs. And if that means childcare, some districts are now paying low income families to reimburse them for their time that they've lost from work. You can wrap, wrap, and wrap, I'm wrap, way over yeah, 40 yeah, minutes. Okay. So thank you. Thank you so much. And although it's not required that we bring our LCAP back for approval, we did want to bring it back for transparency and have this board take another look at it. Mm -hmm. We turned it into the county. They made their um, suggested corrections. We implemented those, and now we're bringing it forward to the board, and we'll have a clean copy on our website. Thank you. Thank you. And my understanding is that these edits are a regular thing as more data comes in as right. after the as we're, as we're collecting data and um, all of our like we're still collecting data, as you know, like SBAC scores haven't been released, um, things of that nature. So things, it's a working document, but you have to, you know, you have to get it approved and bring it forward. So, yeah. Thank you. So I would make a motion to approve the revised 2021-2024 local control accountability plan as it was presented. Second. Trustee Barrios. I abstain. And that passes. Okay, 17.5. Review and potential approval of the tentative agreement between Teamster Local Union number 856 and Mount Diablo Unified School District for the 23 to 20. 2023 to 2026 collective bargaining agreement. Yep, and I just I just want to say when um, when I gave my superintendent report and I said I visited those three groups, it had nothing to do with this with this contract, <laughs> but but it does have everything to do with with those really are um, you know the backbones of our of our school sites, and I wanted to give um, I wanted to give the respect where it was due, and um, and so we are extremely extremely proud that we were able to to get to this point. So we're gonna turn it over to Mr. Sheehy who will, who will share this item. Excellent, thank you. I'm, with great excitement, I'm bringing forward this item tonight. I do want to thank 
Mark Jones, the labor representative from Teamsters. I want to thank all the, everyone in Teamsters, the Teamsters negotiating team, as well as the district negotiating team. I stepped into negotiations a little bit later than everyone else. I followed uh, Dr. Dan Scudero as a chief negotiator. So I was able to step in and work very collaboratively with both sides. And it was a great experience. And I'm really glad that we were able to come to this agreement uh, under the direction of the board. So I want to thank you all. Um, we are bringing forth this, this, this um, approval tonight. And we do move, um, ask that the board take action tonight to approve this agreement. Well, thank you to all involved. This is very, very exciting. Um, I would like to move to approve the tentative agreement between Teamsters Local Union 856 and the Mount Diablo Unified School District for the 2023 to 2026 collective bargaining agreement. I'll second that. And I agree. It is exciting. <laughs> it's a good one. And congratulations. Um, Trustee Barrios. I abstain. And that passes unanimously. We did it. Um, 17.6 review and potential approval of the Williams quarterly report for July 31st, 2023. There's no presentation with this, but but it, as, as you do know, the county comes and mm -hmm. um, inspects our Title I schools, looking for things, um, and it's happening right when school starts. So, um, so our, our schools are ready. We're, um, you know, we're very proud of, of how we fared in the Williams um, inspections or w Williams visits, as they like to call them. And uh, we'll continue to, to keep up our efforts on our end. I make a motion to approve the ratification of the Williams quarterly report, July 31, 2023. I said. Uh, McFerrin. <laughs> McFerrin. <laughs> um, Trustee Barrios. Yes. And that passes. 17.7, um, review and potential approval of standards aligned textbook for financial algebra course. Trustees and welcome, Trustee Barrios, it's nice to see you. Um, so this financial algebra course is actually going to be taking the place of personal finance. Um, this course is a bit more rigorous, is also A through G accredited, which we're very excited about. Um, this textbook is one where the teachers came together and they reviewed actually very limited textbooks. Um, there's not a lot of publishers that actually put this out, but they're happy to be utilizing this one as a pilot and they're bringing it forward or myself on behalf of the financial team, algebra team, or would like to bring it forward for adoption this evening. I'm very excited about this, um, both because I love math, um, but uh, but I also just the the combination of you know students being able to learn personal finance um, now financial algebra, but also have it count for A through G is you know that's where we need to be. So really appreciate all the work that went into this. Um, so I'd like to move to approve the standards aligned financial algebra textbook from Cengage Learning as the adopted textbook for the financial algebra course. Second. Trustee Barrios. Yes. Welcome to financial algebra. <laughs> um, so that passed, yes. Um, da, 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 da. future agenda items. I'm skipping to 20 because we don't, yeah, 21.0. Anything anyone would like to propose from here? I have a future agenda item. I'd like to board to consider that the board, um, we make a policy that the board goes through ethics training every two years, like every other state and county board does. It's optional for school boards, but I think it's something that um, some of our board members could learn some things from. So is it the item that we make the that we discuss making a policy? Cool. Um, I also would like to um, to to at some point at a future meeting get an update on um, our plans for HVAC throughout the district, where we are, what the timeline is, what pieces you know we can afford through Measure J, et cetera. So HVAC update. 
Thank you. Would that be an update? Do you think we had a big HVAC presentation? I'm recalling. <laughs> I don't remember when, but in, a few months ago, um, that like specified where it was happening, but not necessarily exactly. We didn't go, if I'm remembering, it didn't go into the weeds of the what, except like big, I remember big drawings and things like that. Exactly. I think it was a big picture proposal. Yeah. And so for us to now see a timeline of the actions for this year that are planned, like yeah. which school sites, um, because I think it's a big topic right now as, mm -hmm. as it's really hot outside this week. Mm -hmm. So we're hearing from different parts of our school, our aging school system. Mm -hmm. um, so to know kind of what the lo longer term plan yeah. is. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify how like exactly what we want, needed to know. Thank you. Anything else? Sound good? I just, I just want to, um, I want to apologize to all the people out there watching. Our, um, our, our PIO um, is not able to tweet um, or um, blow by blow on the on the uh, board meeting because she's getting trained on on running the system over here. And so, so I'm sorry for everyone who was following Twitter, hoping to get updates from mm -hmm. the, from the meeting, but. She'll be back shortly on. That would be called X now. <laughs> yes. <okay. laughs> but thank you. Thank you, Teresa, for being back up and learning so that it doesn't all fall on Laura. Um, I think with that, our meeting 